I'm going through the 2017 AP uh, Qu Chemistry FRQ question number three. This is a 10 point question. So it starts off, it gives us an equation, nitrogen plus oxygen turns into two NOs. At high temperatures, these two reactants can react to produce nitrogen monoxide as represented by the equation above. So first thing is write the expression for the equilibrium constant Kp for the forward reaction. So these are all gases, we want to write the Kp. Now that is actually a pretty easy thing to do, but we noticed that uh, across the nation what kids did is they did the Kc, you know, the concentrations, and they did brackets, and then they got in trouble. So for Kp, we have to remind students, you know, you do the partial pressure of the NO, so the product, so it's still products over reactants, raised to the powers of their coefficients, but everything is partial pressures. So partial pressure of N2 times the partial pressure of O2. So that should have been an easy point for that, but again, some people met, did the concentrations rather than partial pressures. So part B is it says a student injects some N2 and O2 into a, an evacuated uh, rigid container and raises the temperature back to 2000. Okay, at this temperature, the initial partial pressures of this and this are this number and this number, respectively. The system is allowed to reach equilibrium. The partial pressure of the product is that, number uh, 0.122. So now use this information to calculate the value of Kp. So we are talking about a nice little ice box here. And the ice box is <clears throat> the N2O2 and N2O2NO. Uh, 2 So they told us this number here the 6.01 and they told us this. Now for me I had to be very careful to make sure I put those in the correct boxes. Now they didn't say they put any NO so that implies that this is zero atmospheres and the implied numbers are very important and this is at the end the NO is the 0.122 so if we started with zero and we ended up with 0.122 we must have made uh, 0.122 atmospheres and this row here, this change row, is the only row that matches the 2 to 1 to 1 um, stoichiometry. The top numbers can be anything, the bottom numbers can be anything, but this middle row has to match the 1 to 1 to 2 ratio. So if I had 0.122 atmospheres, then over here this should be half of that. Okay, and half of that will be 0.061. And this will also be 0 0.061. And since I'm making this chemical, I'm using up these chemicals. So I always like to put a double line right here to remind myself that, you know, if this is positive on this side of my change, then I have a negative change on the other side. So 1.61 minus 0 0.061, I'm going to get a value of 1.55 atmospheres. And 6.01 minus 0 0.061, I get 5.95 atmospheres. So now I fill these up. So these numbers here are the ones that go into my expression, which I've done down below. And again, for me, I have to be careful. Don't not forget to square this value here. And when I'm all done, I get my answer here, 0 0.00161. Now, on the scoring guideline, it says this is worth a, a point to get the answer, and it's worth a point to uh, get the partial pressures in here, to these bottom row here. And you don't really have to show these. If you showed it you know, down here, it'd be fine. Uh, but the idea is in sort of partial credit. So even if you didn't get this point here, if you at least did your icebox correctly, you could get one point. Now the next portion of the question changes a little bit. It says the nitrogen monoxide can undergo further reactions to produce acids such as HNO2, a weak acid with a Ka of 4 times 10 to minus 4, and a pKa of 3.40. So as soon as we get here, just the fact that we're given a Ka, that implies this equation. So we have the dissociation of a weak acid, HNO2 turns into H plus and NO2 minus. So that's just seen Ka, we should know that that is true, and I wrote it in here. And it also knows, you know, that the Ka is the, you know, the 
H plus times the uh, NO2 minus concentration divided by the HNO2, because everybody is aqueous, equals 4.0 times 10 to minus 4. And now we're talking about a buffer solution with a pH of 3.40. And we should know that if we want to make a buffer, okay, a buffer is going to be a really, you can use this acid equation, but a buffer is something that has a nice donor, an acid, and it has the conjugate base because that's a nice acceptor. So it's an acid and a base in solution together that don't uh, neutralize each other. It's an acid and it's conjugate base, weak acid and it's conjugate base. So if we have a buffer like that, and our perfect buffer, okay, you know, the best buffer we can make is one where we have large equal amounts of the uh, donor and the um, acceptor, and, and that's a situation where these two would cancel out, and so the pH, okay, of this, so we take a negative log of that guy, is going to be the same as the negative log of this guy, okay, so the pH equals the pKa for our best buffer, and the pKa of this turns out to be 3.4, and we should notice that in this problem, they're asking us to make a buffer with a pH of 3.4. So hopefully we recognize that we are going to be making the best buffer for this situation. We need a buffer where the HNO2 and the NO2- minus are equal. So all that kind of background information just comes from uh, what we notice in the question. Now we can go back and answer the question. Explain why the addition of 0.1 molar NaOH to 0.1 molar HNO2 can result in the formation of a buffer solution. And we need to do the net ionic equation for this. So what we're saying is if we had some acid, we could turn it into its conjugate base by adding some base. So let's go look at that equation. So I'm saying that if I had HNO2, weak acid, and I add some NaOH, and we just have a simple acid-base reaction. We're going to make water, and we're going to have NaNO2. Now, this is soluble substance. You know, this is a soluble substance. Uh, that's water. That's a weak acid. So our net equation would be HNO2 plus OH minus turns into water and NO2 minus, and what we should notice here is that we just changed our uh, weak acid into its conjugate base, okay, and those two things are what we need in order to have our buffer. So we want to show, we want to say something about that. Uh, we can make a buffer Okay, by using the OH minus to change some of the HNO3, HNO2, excuse me, into NO2 minus. Okay the combination of those two is going to be a buffer. Okay, so we're going to use our uh, base to change a little bit of our acid into our conjugate base and that'll make a buffer. Now let's go back to the rest of the question. Okay, uh, for next part here. Okay, now that was um, that was a two-point question. So one point was for mentioning that a combination of those two is going to give us a buffer. And then the second one is for getting our nice uh, net ionic equation. So that was our second point. And don't forget to leave out those spectators. Now the other part of the question says, determine the volume in milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH the student should add to 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar HNO2 to make a buffer with a pH of 3.0. Okay, and this is pretty easy kind of an idea because all we're saying is if we wanted to have a buffer that we would uh, need to have a buffer with 3.4, we need to have equal amounts of those two. Well, since our acid and our base here are both 0.1 molar, 
okay, then all we would need is 50 milliliters of our base to neutralize, you know, half of the acid that we have. And that's all we have to say is that we're going to need 50 milliliters. So part I, I, okay, 50 milliliters of the NEOH solution is needed. And um, we'd have to say because we want to have a one-to-one -one ratio of the uh, HNO2 and the NO2 minus. Okay, and so that's where two more points. So one is, you know, if we say this, have we have 50 milliliters, you know, that earned us one point. And then we have to really clearly indicate that we need the one-to-one -one ratio of the HNO2 and the NO2 minus, okay, and that will give us the pH of, uh, that equals the pKa, that equals 3.40. So two points there, one for saying that we need uh, 50 milliliters, and one point for clearly saying that we need a one-to-one -one ratio of the HNO2 and the NO2 minus. The next portion of this question says a second student makes a buffer by dissolving 0.1 moles of NaNO2 in 100 milliliters of one molar HNO2. So instead of changing HNO2 into NO2 minus, we can just add a chemical that has NO2 minus. And again, the sodium, that's going to be a spectator ion, so we're going to get the NO2 minus ions in there. So which is more resistant to changes in pH when a strong acid or strong base is added, the buffer made by this person here, this second student, or the one we did originally? And the answer is this one is going to be the one. Because you can see what happens here. We have uh, 100 milliliters of, point, of 1 molar. 100 milliliters of 1 molar. So basically we have 0.1 moles of HNO2. And uh, we're going to be dissolving some uh, NO2 minus. Okay, So you can dissolve 0.1 moles of NO2 minus. in the solution. So we're going to have, you know, uh, 0.1 moles and 0.1 moles. If we go back to the last part, the student was using 0.1 molar um, HNO2 and they had 100 milliliters of that so they were only working with, you know, 0 0.01 moles of HNO2 and then they added, you know, the base, so they even reduced the amount of HNO2. So uh, in the former version, you know, they were making a nice buffer, but they were using a lot less HNO2 and NO2 minus. Okay, so since in this second situation, they're using a lot more moles of HNO2 and NO2 minus, it's going to be much more resistant to changes in pH when we add a strong acid or base. So it all comes down to the number of moles of acid and base that are involved. Now the last little portion here is a new buffer is made using HNO2 as one of the ingredients. A particulate representation of a small representative portion of the buffer is shown. Uh, is the pH of the buffer represented in the diagram greater than, less than, or equal to 3.4? So when we're done we have to say the pH of the buffer is it greater than, less than, or equal to 3.4? Justify your answer. So here's our acid molecules, and here's our conjugate base, and we can see our acid molecules. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of these acid molecules, and for our base molecules, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 of these. Okay, if these were equal to each other, then we would have a pH of 3.40, okay, but we have more acid more acid. So is more acid going to make my uh, buffer higher pH or lower pH? And I always have to remember that uh, acid makes it lower pH. So uh, my answer is going to be the answer is going to be less than. Uh, okay, so less than 3.40. Um, why is it less than 3.40? Okay, because I have the ratio of my acid molecules to my base molecules is greater. So I'm going to have more acid molecules, so HNO2 to NO2 minus, 
okay, is greater than 1, or somehow just say I have more acid molecules, so therefore the solution is going to be a little bit acidic. And that is the answer. Okay, I get one point for that just for saying that it's um, um, getting the correct choice with my justification. And that is question three.